Luke chapter 3. The question was, I had mentioned coming through the study on um, Luke that Luke gives the genealogy of Mary, uh, although her name does not appear in the genealogy. So how do I know it's the genealogy of Mary versus not being the genealogy of Joseph? Okay, so you need two books right up front. You'll need the book of Matthew and the book of Luke. In Luke, it'll be chapter 3. In Matthew, it's chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1 and Luke chapter 3. Okay, since everybody's probably in Matthew, we'll look at Luke first. <laughs> Luke 3 verse 23. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heliar. Hel Hel let me see. Um, let me see if I got some pronunciation marks on that. I hate pronouncing things wrong. He lie. He lie. Okay? That guy. So, question for you. We're told right here that Joseph's father is who? Okay. Matthew chapter 1, verse 16. Matthew 1, verse 16. One other confusing thing is this. In Luke, it gives you the genealogy from Jesus backwards, going back to uh, Adam. In Matthew, it goes the other way. It starts with the patriarchs and comes forward to Jesus. So you got to flip them over to figure out what you got. Matthew 1, verse 16. And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Who is Joseph's mother or father? Joseph. Okay, what's it say? Well, you're in, are you in Luke? You're in Luke. Look at Matthew one sixteen. Matthew one sixteen. Joseph, the husband of Mary. Okay, so it's saying Jacob, and Jacob begot Joseph. So, who's Joseph's daddy? <laughs> one says it's Heli, the other one says it's Jacob. All right. Heli is not the father of Joseph. Jacob is. Joseph was a descendant from Solomon. Go back to Matthew. Matthew 1. Look at verse 7. Matthew 1. In fact, I need to turn there. Matthew 1. Because I want to get one other thing in there. Um, Okay, let's go back to verse 6, because here's a name you'll all recognize. Matthew 1, 6. And Jesse begat David, the king. And David, the king, begat Solomon, of her that had been, so forth, so on. Drop down to verse 7. And Solomon begat Rehoboam, Rehoboam begat, and they all begat. <laughs> okay, so we're going back to David. The line we're coming down through when we get to David is Solomon. Let's go to Luke and see what happens. Luke 3, verse 31. Which was the son of Melia, which was the son of Mina, which was the son of Matan, which was the son of... Nathan, which was the son of David, not Solomon. So we follow two different branches. From David, one side follows Solomon. 
One side follows Nathan. Okay, we'll get some more. Joseph is Heli's son in the sense that he's a son-in-law. In the Bible, you can call your son-in-law your son. Let's find it in the Bible so you don't think I'm just telling you something. 1 Samuel 24. 1 Samuel 24, verse 16. 1 Samuel 24, 16. And it came to pass, when David had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul, that Saul said, Is this the voice of my son, David? Was that his son? No. Saul lifted up his voice and wept. Back up to verse 14 to find out how it is his son. And Himiak answered the king and said, And who is so faithful among all the servants as David, which is the king's son-in-law, and goeth at thy bidding and is honorable in thy house, in thine house? Verse 14. 1 Samuel twenty-two, fourteen. 14. Oh, we were oh I, you're right. So he is his son-in-law, and so that puts him in the family, and he calls him a son. Um, now, I'm going to get real complicated. Really? Yes. That's been simple stuff so far. <laughs> we're going to complicate it and dive deep. If Helia only had daughters and no sons. We have biblical precedent uh, for substituting the son-in-law as the son. And here's this in the Bible, Numbers 27. Numbers 27, verse 11. Numbers 27, 11. And if his father have no brethren, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his kinsmen that is next of him, uh, that is next to him of his family, and he shall possess it. And it shall be unto the children of Israel a statute and a judgment, as the Lord commanded Moses. And then you see it play out in Numbers 36, 1 to 12. I'll not read it to you, but there you can see an actual event where that happens. There's no record in the historical books, or the non-biblical text, to say whether or not Heliel had sons or daughters or what, or, you know, what his genealogy literally was. All we're given is Bible, and we're not given a whole lot of information. All we know is the Bible's correct. It said son, so he could have meant son-in-law, or he could have meant because he had no male heirs, his inheritance was going to pass to Joseph as though Joseph was his own son. And it could have been in there that way. Okay, the switch in Mary's line is important because it gives Jesus the right to David's throne. In Matthew, we've seen the kingly line coming down from David through Solomon and Joseph and Jesus. Okay, so that's how he gets it legally. In Mary's line, we're going to find that she also is a descendant of David, but not a descendant of the kings. She's a descendant of the prophets, Nathan, Nathan the prophet. Um, look at... Uh, look at Luke 1, verse 32. Luke 1, 32. Here's the real issue. This is, of course, speaking about Jesus. It says, He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. Okay? Matthew gave us the kingly line, but the problem is that kingly line is supposed to be cut off. It's been cursed, remember? Mm. So how can a son of David sit on the throne when it's been cursed? 
because he's the son of David, but he's not from the kingly line of the kings. Matthew uh, 1, verse 11. Matthew 1, 11. And Josiah begat Jeconias and his brethren about the time they were carried away into Babylon, away to Babylon. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias begat uh, Salathiel, and Salathiel begat Zerubbabel. Okay, the problem becomes Jeconias, or Jehoiakim, or Jehoiachin, or Coniah. Those are all names for the same person. He's an evil king in the line of David. And God said, I'm not going to allow anybody who's a descendant of that man to sit on this throne. And that's where we find Jesus' line end up in Matthew. Let's find it in the Bible. Jeremiah 22. Jeremiah 22 will be in verse 24. As I live, saith the Lord, though Kaniah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, were the signet upon my right hand, yet would I pluck thee thence. Whew. Strong words from God. And I will give thee into the hand of them that seek thy life, into the hand of them whose face thou fearest, even into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of the Chaldeans. And I will cast thee out, and thy mother that bare thee, into another country, uh, were it not, uh, were ye not born, and there shall ye die. But to the land wherein they desire to return, thither shall they not return. This man, Kaniah, a despised, broken idol, he is a vessel wherein is no pleasure. Therefore, all they cast out, wherefore are they cast out, he and his seed, and are cast into the land which they know not. O earth, earth, hear the word of the Lord. This, thus saith the Lord, write ye this man childless, a man that shall not prosper in his days, for no man... Of, the, of his seed shall prosper sitting upon the throne of David and ruling any more in Judah. So, you don't get the throne if you're from the line of Solomon or Coniah right here. That seems to contradict a promise made. Let's find the promise God made to David. 1 Chronicles 22. 1 Chronicles 22, verse 7. First Chronicles 22, verse 7. And David said to Solomon, My son, as for me, it was in mine heart to build a house unto the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Thou, shalt shed, uh, thou hast shed blood abundantly. He sure did and hast made great wars. Thou shalt not build an house unto my name, because thou hast shed much blood upon the earth in my sight. Behold, a son shall be born to thee, who shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies round about. For his name shall be Solomon, and I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. He shall build an house for my name, and he shall be my son, and I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Hmm? <laughs> How is that? Um, this would make Jesus ineligible for the throne if he descended from Jeconiah or Coniah or any of the other two names you want to pick. <laughs> but... He wasn't really a seed of Coniah because his father was not of the line of Solomon. His father was God himself and he was adopted in as it says in Luke, supposed to be the son of Joseph. 
He was a member of the family, but not blood-related. His blood was somebody else's. Um, since Jesus was only an adopted son, he's not a biological son of the line of the kings. So his, that doesn't affect him being cursed to sit on the throne. This curse indicates, obviously, that the Messiah can't have a human father. It was a real perplexing problem. If you were a Jew, you'd be scratching your head trying to figure out how in the world God's going to work this out. Because he said Israel's going to get the throne, the throne of David, and Solomon's going to last forever and ever. And Yet then he cursed it and said nobody coming from that line is going to be able to sit on the throne. But then Messiah's coming and he's going to sit on the throne. How? Obviously he's got to be a different father. Okay. So uh, since... Okay, that'll, that'll do it for that. That's probably more information than we even had for the question, but <laughs> there it is. All right, next question. This is a crazy one. What about aliens? <laughs> aliens. Aliens. Um, you know aliens are real? That's not some made-up thing. That's legitimate. And it's in the Bible. It's there. And they're, they're actually out there now. They're... I, I wouldn't say they're, I, I wouldn't know whether or not they're interacting with this earth right now. They soon will be. Uh, Jude, 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 and give me the last chapter of Jude. <laughs> Jude, verse 6. Jude, verse 6. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Okay, so that tells you an event happened. Now, we're not given a whole lot of details on it, but we're given a little bit. He says there were some angels that did not keep their first estate. Okay, where do you live? It's called real estate. <laughs> okay. So the place they were assigned, they did not stay, but they left that place. And he said, those people, or I shouldn't say people, those angels, <laughs> he's put in everlasting darkness, chained up. Now what he doesn't tell you, and we're going to find it in the Bible, is that continues to happen. There were some disembodied angels. This earth was originally run by Lucifer in Isaiah 14. And when Lucifer fell, guess what? The angels lost their estate. Because this was their real estate and it was, it was no longer their real estate. So they were sent out into limbo, into the outer space. And they're affecting people today. We call them demons. They're still out there. They answer to the devil. Those things are still affecting people probably us too. However, there's a difference between that and one that takes on flesh. When he takes on flesh, he's trying to change addresses. And we'll find it in the Bible. Angels are spirits in their original state. Look at Psalm chapter 104. Psalms 104 verse 4. God didn't create any, on, originally, he didn't create any original servants for the devil. <laughs> he didn't do that. He got him some. He conned some. Uh, Psalm 104, verse 4. Who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire. Okay, so angels are in their original form a spirit, not a body, a spirit. Look at Hebrews 1. Hebrews 1 verse 7. When it just shows up once, you can say, I don't know what I'm talking about. When it shows up twice, you can say, he still doesn't know what he's talking about, but I'm going to look at it. <laughs> Hebrews 1 verse 7. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flaming fire. Shows up in the Bible twice, we're supposed to take note of it. 
Now that's a sure thing when you see it twice then that's something God's saying go study take a look at when an angel mutates from the spirit world into the physical he permanently forfeits his spirit world privileges um, these are the perverted angels we'll find them in Genesis Genesis chapter 6 Genesis 6 verse 1 It's a long way to go to answer one question. Huh? <laughs> well. Genesis 6, verse 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply upon the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto him, to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be in 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that wording is important he put every phrase in there on purpose there were then and also after that we'll cover all that later when the sons of god came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown what's a wild stuff in that bible <laughs> he's telling you stuff that uh that would just blow your mind if you don't take it one little piece at a time so here's what we got these sons of god now we're going to have to define sons of god because it says sons of god came into the daughters of men i'm going to give you the standard answer for that the standard answer that i think is wrong is the sons of god are the godly line of seth and the <laughs> And the ungodly are the line of uh, Cain. Or not, yeah, Cain, line of Cain. Okay, well, since when did, let's just be extreme. Since when did a saved person marrying an unsaved person produce a giant? Mm. <laughs> okay, doesn't happen that way. Furthermore, you need to just go with Bible dictionary and find out what the sons of God are. Use your concordance, look up the word sons of God, find out what God defines it as, not what man makes up. Uh, look at Leviticus 18. Leviticus 18, verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind, no homosexuals. It is abomination. Now, I've heard this so many times, it, it's crazy. They'll run to the list of abominations in Proverbs and say, see, it's not on the list. Well, you re read your Bible. You know, three books into the Bible, you found it to be an abomination. How'd you get all the way over to Proverbs without finding out that was an abomination? <laughs> Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. That's coming in America. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there unto. It is confusion. Okay, God says, I made things the way I made them on purpose, and I've told you what the purpose is. And if you start monkeying around with it, I say it's an abomination. And furthermore, it's confusion, not my confusion, your confusion. When the Lord destroyed the perverted angels back in Genesis, he says they're going to end up dying like men. Now, this is an important passage. Psalm chapter 82. Psalm 82, verse 5. Psalm 82, verse 5. They know not. Remember we talked about confusion. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High. Okay, so, what is a son of God? A child of the Most High. So, that's what he's talking about when he says gods. Verse 7, But ye shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. Okay, so, they... 
when they come to earth and take on the form of humanity, God says, okay, you've voided out your ability to be a spirit being and flesh dies and burns in hell and that's what you're going to do. Furthermore, he limited their lifespan. I'll show you another place people mess things up. In Genesis 6, he says he gave them a lifespan of 120 years. That's not talking to man. That's talking to the giants. Do the math. Go through. You'll find out it took Noah 100 years, not 120. 100 years to complete the boat. Okay, well, if the lifespan was 120 on the giants, then the flood would have killed them, and that would have matched. But guess what? It wasn't. It was 100 years. Therefore, that time's limiting is to the giant. Uh, look at First Chronicles. No, not, I said Chronicle, First Corinthians. First Corinthians six, verse one. This makes all these odd little phrases and things come together in the Bible when you see it all put together. First Corinthians six, verse one. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matter? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? When are you judging angels? The great white throne judgment. When you're one flesh with Christ, then you'll have the same mind. You'll be 100% like him. You'll, be, you'll have been for a thousand years righteous and holy. And when you see those angels come up for judgment, you'll have the same mind as God, and you'll be on the jury saying, the lake of fire. Uh, First Peter. First Peter 3, verse 19. Here's the, the creatures, <laughs> I'm going to call them that, <laughs> of Genesis 6. Here's where they wound up. They wound up in hell or prison. That's how it's phrased here. 1 Peter 3, verse 19. By which also he went, he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. That is, Jesus Christ, at his um, death and burial, went down into the earth and preached to these things that were locked away in chains of darkness or chains under darkness okay he's not preaching to give an invitation and say come repent he's preaching to say i am winning and you're going down <laughs> it's what i've been telling you all along uh, look at second peter 2 2 Peter 2, verse 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, in Genesis 6, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Okay, that's what he told them. He went down there and preached to them and said, Hey, I'm winning. Guess what? I'm about to pop out on the top up there. And when I do, I'm going to produce a whole jury. And we'll be back to judge you. <laughs> he, uh, he's rubbing it in the face of death. He triumphs over it. Okay, so who are these sons of God? Let's verify we've got the right definition of that because people don't realize this. When I say sons of God, you need to know what I'm talking about because the Bible has five definitions for it. So let's find it. Genesis 5 verse 1. Genesis 5, verse 1. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he, he them and blessed them and called their name. Anybody know what their name was? Adam. 
Not Adam and Eve. Adam. So when I get married, Victor goes bye-bye, and it's Lansing that goes on Toby's name. The male lends his name to the female. And that's what's going on here. Eve's name is Eve Adam. <laughs> okay, so here it is. Male and female created them, blessed them, and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. Now the problem with that is this. Adam was no longer in the image of God when he sinned. He said, in the day you eat thereof, you'll surely die. Is part of God dead? I don't think so. <laughs> so, when Adam reproduces something in his own image, it's not the same as the image of God. It's different. But when Adam was created, he was created in the image of God. So Adam could be said to be a son of God. Son of God is simply something uh, sinless, perfect, at the time of creation. Not birth, creation. Let's find it in the Bible. Luke, Luke 3. Luke 3, verse 38. Luke 3, 38. Don't you love these name lists? <laughs> Every now and then you get a surprise in there. Luke 3.38. Which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. So, you can call Adam a son of God, because the Bible does. Okay, now he, he obviously lost that image when he sinned. And I'll tell you when it happened. I don't have the verses, so I can pull them up right now. I should have put them in the notes. When he creates Adam, he says he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. After he sinned, he's telling them their curses. And he says, dust you are, and unto dust you shall return. I thought he was a living soul. Mm -mm, that died. So God changed his definition of him. And it's after that definition change that he begins to have children in his own image. Okay, so one way to define sons of God is Adam. Okay, but that's only one person and we're probably not going to have to need to know that. But I want you to know it anyway. The next way you can say a son of God is, is an angel. Genesis 3 verse 5. Genesis 3 verse 5. This is, of course, the devil talking to Eve. Genesis 3, 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as... What? Gods. Knowing good and evil. Wait a minute. Didn't... Wouldn't you have thought... Okay, he just told me I'll be as gods. What God? What are you talking about? What are the gods? She knew what he was talking about. She didn't question it. Let's find it in the Bible. Job chapter 1. Job 1 verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Okay, there's those uh, beings which left their first estate. Okay, they have to report in. <laughs> You've been being a good bad boy? <laughs> Give account. Look at it again, Job 2 verse 1. Job 2, verse 1. And there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. So she knows who these gods are that he's talking about. They're his pals, the ones he's palling around with. Job 38. Job 38, verse 4. 
Now we're going back close to where these beings leave their first estate. Job 38, verse 4. Where was thou? <laughs> this is God getting smart aleck with Job. Job's been running around, you know, acting like he's so smart and he wants to have a, 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 uh, an intellectual conversation with God. God says, I've had enough. Let me talk to you, boy. Here he says, where was thou when I laid the foundation of the earth? Okay, so let me ask you something. Where are we time-wise? The foundation of the earth. That is earth being created. Where does earth get created? Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Does it say what day it was? It doesn't, because it wasn't on a day. Everywhere else he creates where he makes something and he says it was the evening and the morning were. When it's heaven and earth, there's no evening, no morning. No, this was this day or that day. So this is where he's talking about, the foundations of the earth. But we're going to find out who was there. Declare it if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measure thereof if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched line upon it? Whereupon the foundations thereof fastened? Or who hath laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Those things were there when God was creating Genesis 1-1, the heaven and the earth. Now, they're shouting for joy. Why do you think they're shouting for joy? Because that's going to be their new home. They're going to get to run something. Um, okay, so that's we've seen Adam is considered a son of God. Angels can be considered a son of God. Israel, the nation, is considered a son of God. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, verse 6. Isaiah 43, 6. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth, even every one that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. There are no Christians there. That's the nation of Israel. That's who he's talking about. Find it again, Hosea 1, verse 10. Hosea 1, 10. Hosea 1.10 Ye are the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them ye are not my people there it shall be said unto them ye are the sons of the living God. That's the restore the, when Israel goes back to the favor of God. There they're going to be called the sons of God. Okay, now there's something else called a son of God. And we're happy about this one, a Christian. You are son of God. Don't deserve it, but we are. John chapter 1. John 1 verse 12. John 1 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on his name. If you believed in Jesus Christ for your salvation, that's you right there. You're a son of God, or you will be. Galatians 4, verse 6. Galatians 4, verse 6. And because ye are sons, well, duh, every, every male is. <laughs> but this is talking about something else. Because ye are sons, it's a shocker. But because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Well, that father that he's talking to is God. So he must be talking about sons of God there. So that's a Christian fits in that. 1 John 3. 1 John 3, verse 1. 1 John 3, 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. If that ain't clear, I don't know what is. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Can I say amen? Amen, me too. <laughs> That's exciting. 
Now there's another one that's a little different. This one is an obvious answer, but there's uh, an asterisk by it. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now, he's something different than the rest of us. He's the only begotten Son of God. We're sons, plural, and we're little bitties. <laughs> but he is the begotten, the favorite. In fact, that's where all of God's favor lands. This is my beloved son talking about Jesus in whom I'm well pleased. Acts chapter 8. Acts 8 verse 37. Acts 8, 37. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Yes, he is. And you won't read much Bible before you have to confront that. Is he or is he not? And if you decide he's not, you won't read much more Bible. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 1. 2 Corinthians 1, verse 19. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me, and Silvanus, and Timotheus, was not, uh, was not yet and nay, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. That is a tongue twister. You got the first part of it for sure. <laughs> He's the Son of God. Clearly. Galatians 2, verse 20. Galatians 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. When did that happen? That's right. And if you're saved, what was done to Christ is attributed to you because you're in Christ. So that's the only way God can see you as sinless is if you're hiding in Christ. So what happened to Christ? He was crucified on a cross. All sin was put on him. And then he got rid of all the sin. So it's accounted a to you. Uh, Galatians 2.20 I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. If he's not the Son of God, you didn't get saved. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. We covered the sons of God. That answered one question in Genesis 6-4, when the sons of God saw the daughters men. So now you've gotten an idea of what the sons of God are. There's five categories, and you've got to identify which of those five is he talking about. Obviously, it's the angels. He's not talking about Israel as a nation. There wasn't an Israel yet. <laughs> He's not talking about Christians. Christ hadn't died yet. There aren't any Christians. <laughs> you go down the line, the only one that applies to it wasn't Adam. Adam wasn't around. It, it's got to be the angels that he's referring to as the sons of God defined by the Bible. Okay, back to Genesis 6. Look at verse 4. We'll pick up another word or two. Acts 6, uh, not, not Acts. Genesis 6, verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that. Huh? Huh? When the sons of God came into the daughters of men, so forth, so on. Okay, so he's saying whatever was happening back there in Genesis 6 happened again. It kept happening. Because also after that. Where's the also after that? Okay, this gives us the idea that it happened after the flood. So let's find it. Numbers 13, 33. Numbers 13, 33. Numbers 13, 33. And there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which came of the giants. And we were in our own sights, grasshoppers, and were in their sights. Okay, it happened again there. There's going to be too many of these references for me to give you all of them, but I'll give you a few of them. Deuteronomy 3, 11 to 13. I'm not going to read it. Joshua 18, 16. 1 Samuel 17, 4. 2 Samuel 21, 16. 1 Chronicles 20, verse 8, and you can get the notes or the video on it. <laughs> Satan's plan. 
has always been to destroy the promised seed. God promised that seed. One day, Satan, your doom is sure. That's what he told him in the garden. You fooled Eve, but you ain't going to get away with it. And so, for 6,000 years now, he's been trying every move he can make to destroy God's plan. It's not going to work, but he good effort. <laughs> um, okay, back to Genesis, 4, Genesis 6, verse 4. He says, uh, there were giants in the earth in, uh, in those days. So at the time right before the flood and also after that, the those days and the after that are in the Bible. There's warnings of these days. The Bible warns us of things being just like this. What's the this he's referring to in Genesis 6? The sons of men, or of God, coming into the daughters of men. That's your aliens coming down and inhabiting flesh. Find it in the Bible, Luke 17. Luke 17, verse 26. Luke 17, 26. We've just seen prior to the flood what God did, why he got mad. So let's see what he says as Jesus Christ on earth. Luke 17, 26. And as it was in the days of Noah so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. So he says the end times, it's going to repeat. Same thing that was going on back there under Noah's time is going to be going on again. So it's going to happen again. Look at verse 28. Not only Noah's day, likewise also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat and drink, and they bought, and they sold, and they planted, and they builded. But the same day the light went out of Sodom, there rained fire and brimstone from heaven, and destroyed them all. Okay, that's, um, that's one... I'm trying to find a passage. I can't talk and flip at the same time. <laughs> that's one time that those days are referred to. We'll find uh, three or four more. Uh, Second Peter. Second Peter 2. Second Peter 2, verse 5. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of ungodly. The world of the ungodly. Look at verse 7. And delivered just Lot. It's always, these two are running right neck and neck. Always, he's connecting these two. We've seen what was going on in Noah's day. But obviously, the same thing was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, we know there was homosexuality. That's what a sodomite is. <laughs> but there was more going on than just human. Yeah, yeah the, the, the humans were, yeah, trying to get to the angels. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> Look at Jude. Jude. Verse 6. Yeah. <laughs> Jude 6 through verse 7. He says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sot, he's putting it in the same context. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering vengeance of eternal fire. Strange flesh is something other than human. It's not strange for two humans to get together. It's strange for an alien to pick up some dead body and create a, a lineage out of that. Look at uh, Daniel, Daniel chapter 2. I'm giving you all the wild verses all at once tonight, aren't I? <laughs> okay. Daniel 2, verse 43. 
This is the image and the, um, the explanation of it. Daniel 2, verse 43. And whereas thou sawest, the, uh, sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they, whoever the they is, shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Whatever they is, is not men. And they're going to mingle themselves with men. Just what we saw in Genesis chapter 6. This is talking about the tribulation days. But they shall not cleave one to the other, even as iron is not mixed with clay. That is, um, they probably cannot um, reproduce beyond one generation. The giant that comes out becomes sterile. And in the days of these kings shall, uh, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Okay, there's where you are on the timeline. That's the tribulation. That's Armageddon where he destroys it all and then sets up a kingdom that lasts forever. Revelation 17. Revelation 17. It was the ten toes that were mixed with miry clay. Let's find them in Revelation. Revelation 17, 12. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which has received no kingdom as yet. Hmm? This is 90 to 100 A.D. when he's writing. And he says these kings are around, but they've not got their kingdom yet. Some supernatural being that's coming to earth and going to get a kingdom. And there's ten of them, just like Daniel's ten toes he was talking about. <laughs> And they're going to mix with humans, but they ain't going to mix. <laughs> okay, the fallen angels have been here before, and they're coming back. Look at 1 Peter 3. 1 Peter 3. Let's, let's skip all that. I've already covered too much of that. I'm going to take you... I'm moving fast. I'm on the last point, and then we'll be done. And uh, this is a short one. Five pages. Uh, Gen uh, Genesis 6, verse 4. Genesis 6, verse 4. I'm trying to give you the answer on two verses tonight. Genesis 6, verse 4. <laughs> Genesis 6, verse 4. We're going to look notice something at the end of this verse. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and, and they bare children unto them. The same became mighty men, which were of old... Men of renown. What became mighty men which were of old? Okay, you don't have a baby and it becomes a child that was of old. That's the body these aliens, these spirit beings, take. They take the body of someone who was famous, who's now dead. They want to inhabit that body. Because that gives them what they all crave, praise. Now let's find it in the Bible, Jude, Jude verse 9. Jude verse 9. Jude 9. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Durst not bring railing accusation against him, but said, The Lord rebuked thee. Okay. They're arguing over a body. And it was a man of renown. And a man of old. And the devil wanted that body. Now, he's got a plan for it. He scrapped that plan because God wouldn't let him have it. You know what body he's got now? Judas Iscariot. That body is in a cryogenic chamber in hell. It says when he committed suicide, he went to his own place. And he's coming back. Genesis, uh, let's see. Yeah, that, that'll do it for tonight. I'll tell you, we have covered some material tonight. So if y'all can digest all that, you're doing good.